Today we're going to begin lesson three, multiply and divide monomials. If you'll notice to the right, we still have the same essential question as we've had for the last two sections. Why is it helpful to write numbers in different ways? We've learned to write numbers from fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions. We've learned to write numbers um, using exponents. And now we're going to learn to multiply and divide monomials. Your vocabulary word is monomial, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and we're still on standard 8.ee.1, which is posted in the front of the room. Let's turn to page 24. All right, the first thing we're going to do is start with the product of powers rule. We've probably already written this in our math journal, but let's go over it again. The product of powers means that to multiply powers with the same base, we add their exponents. And as we said yesterday, the base stays the same. So you can write that underneath. Base stays the same. So we don't multiply their bases. All we do with the base is leave it the same, and then add the exponents. So we've got two examples here. 2 to the 4th times 2 to the, th to the third power equals 2 to the 4 plus 3, or 2 to the 7th. You can also do it using variables. And if you want to see it in the algebraic form, a to the m power times a to the n power equals a to the m plus n. So it doesn't matter what the exponents are. We just add them. All right, here's our vocabulary word. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. You can use the laws of exponents to simplify monomials. So it sounds like it's a lot harder than what it is, but a monomial, if it can be a number, it could be 5, it could be 15, it could be negative 2, it could be negative 3. Um, if it could be a variable, it could be x, n, t, whatever variable, uh, you would like to use, or it could be the product of a number and one or more variables. That means it could be multiplied. So 3 times x, 4 times y, 3 times x times y, you could have more than one. So yesterday when we were doing our math minute, we talked about a problem very similar to this one, but I believe it was 2 to the third times 2 to the second or something like that. This one is 3 to the second power times 3 to the fourth power. We know that 3 to the second means that we have two factors of 3, so 3 times 3. And 3 to the fourth means we have four factors, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And if we write that whole expression using exponents, we get 3 to the sixth power. There are six total factors. Notice that the sum of the original exponents is the exponent in the final product. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's our exponent. Let's look at some examples. Number one, we've got simplify using the laws of exponents. You can look through these examples yourself. I won't go through each one of them. It takes some time, and they're right here. Um, one and two are very similar to ones that we've already worked in our math minutes. The one thing I will point out with number one is five to the second power times five to uh, times five. Remember that five is the same as. 5 to the first power. So you don't want to forget that exponent of 1. So it would be 5 to the 2 plus 1 power, or 5 to the third. Number 3 is one that we haven't seen, and it's going to be a little bit different than ones that we've done already up to this point. You'll notice that this time we've got negative 3x to the second power times 4x to the fifth power. The base is x. So you might want to write that here. We have a base of x. Negative 3 and 4 are coefficients. Those are words you may not have heard uh, yet, but we'll be talking about them. Coefficients are negative 3 and 4. So there are two coefficients uh, in this expression. Coefficients are the number that sits right in front of the variable. So 4 is in front of x, negative 3 is in front of x. But the base is x. That's the part that will stay the same. So what we do is we take the negative 3 and we multiply it by 4. 
and we know that that is negative 12. And then we take our base, stays the same, and we add our exponent. So it's exactly like we have been doing up to this point, but um, we had to multiply the coefficients in addition to leaving the base the same and adding the exponents. Let's look down at the bottom at A. And what I'll do is uh, work it over to the side on the left side of your book and you can do the same. So we have 9 to the third power times 9 to the second power. The only thing I want to see from you by way of work is that you leave the base the same and add the exponents. So you would get 9 to the fifth power. And then you would write it down on the line. So 9 to the fifth power. B, I will leave for you to do for yourself. So if you want to uh, pause the video for just a minute and work B, that would be fine. And then come back and we'll work C together. Okay, now that you've worked B, let's take a look at C. C says negative 2m times negative 8m to the fifth. There are a couple of things going on here that we need to remember. The first one is that an m standing alone actually has a 1 exponent. So you might want to write that 1 there. Let's just highlight it so we can remember that anytime you have a variable standing alone there, or even a number standing alone, it has an exponent of 1. The next step is we're going to multiply the coefficients, which are negative 2 and negative 8. M is our base to the 1 plus 5 power. Negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. M to the 6th power. So we'll go down on the C line and write 16M to the 6th. Okay, let's move to page 25, the quotient of powers. This is something we also covered yesterday when we were working in our math minutes. It says to divide powers with the same base, subtract their exponents. Remember once again, base stays the same. This will only work when the base is the same. So notice in the example up here, the base is 3, 3 to the 7th divided by 3 to the 3rd. We subtracted the 2 and we get 3 to the 4th. To show you how it actually works, 5 to the 7th, we have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. That's 7 factors of 5 divided by 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. That's 4 factors of 5. When you mark out the common factors, you're left with 1, 2, 3, 5. So 5 to the 3rd power. The easiest way to do it, however, is just to subtract the exponents. So let's look at the examples below. Number four and number five are very similar to ones we did in our math minute, so I'll have you just take a look at those yourself. But let's look at number six. It's a little bit more difficult. It's got several more numbers involved. Two to the fifth times three to the fifth times five to the second divided by two to the second times three to the fourth times five. Now remember that five has a one with it. So what we're going to do is separate them into common bases. So two to the fifth divided by two to the second here they are. 3 to the 5th divided by 3 to the 4th. Here they are. And 5 to the 2nd divided by 5 to the 1st. Here they are. 5 minus 2 is 3, so 2 to the 3rd. 5 minus 4 is 1, so 3 to the 1st. 5 or 2 minus 1 is 1, so 5 to the 1st. So your answer would be 2 to the 3rd times 3 to the 1st times 5 to the 1st. I would probably write it 2 to the 3rd times 3 times 5. At this point, I'm not going to have you go ahead and, and uh, simplify it to a final answer, but you know that you can by multiplying your 2 to the third. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24, times 5 is 120. Look at the bottom. Let's look at uh, G together, and we'll just work that over to the right on your book. So we have 3 to the 4th times 5 to the 2nd 
times seven to the fifth, divided by three to the second, times five, times seven to the third. So we'll write it out. Three to the fourth divided by three to the second, times five to the second divided by five. And let's go ahead and put a one there so we remember that there is a one and we'll highlight it. Times seven to the fifth divided by seven to the third. Now if we show our subtraction, we have three to the four minus two, which is three to the second, times five to the two minus one, which is five to the first, and we don't need the one, remember, times seven to the five minus three, which is seven to the second. So our answer for G, we can write on the line, is three to the second times five times seven to the second and you don't have to go ahead and multiply that out. Now, I want you to take some time and I want you to work problems D, E, F, H, and I and put the answers over here to the side. If you need some extra space or extra paper, you may get that and, and work that out. When you're finished, come back and we'll look at our last problem. Okay, we're almost finished. Remember that at any time, if you have your online book open, if you're still having problems, anytime there's a purple tutor button, you can open your online book and you can go down to the bottom of the page. And down at the bottom, you'll, you'll see it when you get in there. There's some purple buttons, some red buttons with check marks, different things. If you push the purple button on that page, it will help you with that problem. Number seven, Hawaii's total shoreline is about two to the 10 miles long. New Hampshire shoreline is about two to the seventh miles long. About how many times longer is Hawaii's shoreline than New, New Hampshire's? Okay, so we can also work word problems with this. We're starting with some simple ones. So all you're going to do is divide two to the tenth, divided by two to the seventh, subtract the exponents, and it's about two to the third power or two cubed miles longer than, or times longer than Hawaii's shoreline. And we'll look at some more of these problems as we work together tomorrow. So once you finish up, bring your notes tomorrow. We'll check them and we'll go through any questions you have.